Today we're going to talk about right triangle trig and angles. Remember Sokotoa from geometry? Sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of an angle is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And tangent of an angle is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side. Those are the three main trigonometric functions, but we also have reciprocal functions. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so cosecant of an angle is equal to the ratio of the hypotenuse over the opposite side. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so hypotenuse over adjacent, and cotangent is the reciprocal function for tangent, so its ratio is the adjacent over the opposite. Notice how there is a co in each reciprocal pair, sine and cosecant, cosine and secant, tangent and cotangent. Find the missing side length. Round or truncate your answer to three decimal places. I notice they've given me the measure of angle B, so I will use that as my focus angle and label the sides accordingly. Side CA would be the opposite side because it's opposite angle B. Side CB would be the adjacent side because it's between angle B, our focus angle, and the right angle. And side AB is the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. It's the longest side of the right triangle. Now I can determine which trig function to use. I've been given the length of the hypotenuse and I'm looking for the length of the adjacent side. So I will use the trig function whose ratio deals with adjacent and hypotenuse. That would be cosine. Cosine of angle B or cosine of 38 degrees is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Now I have an equation I can solve. Cosine 38 is equal to x over 16. I'll multiply both sides by 16 to solve for x. x is equal to 16 times cosine of 38. Plug it into a calculator. So our answer is 12.608, blah, blah, blah. Rounded or truncated to three decimal places, rounded would be 12.608, and truncated would also be 12.608. And we were not given units, so here is the length of the missing side. For part B, we'll do the same process. Circle the focus angle and label the sides to determine which trig function to use to solve for x. I want to use the trig function that deals with opposite and hypotenuse, so I'll use sine. Because x is our denominator, we need to multiply both sides by x before dividing both sides by sine of 53 to isolate x. So x is equal to 13 divided by sine of 53. Plug it into a calculator. That would be x equals 16.2777, blah, blah, blah. If we rounded that, we would have 16.278. If we truncated, we would simply cut it off after the third decimal without even looking at the fourth decimal. So 16.277. Both would be acceptable answers on a test. Now we didn't use any of the reciprocal functions to solve for these missing sides because calculators do not have the reciprocal functions. But when we deal with the reciprocal functions, we can rewrite them in terms of sine, cosine, and tangent, and then we can solve from there. Pat the rat got his paw stuck in a thistle. He looks upward at an angle of elevation of 83 degrees, just in time to see a hawk is diving down at an angle straight toward him to take him as prey. The hawk is directly 200 feet above the ground and traveling at seven feet per second. How long does Pat have to escape? Draw a diagram and solve. The flight of the hawk to Pat is the hypotenuse, but we've only been given a rate for the hypotenuse, not a length. So we need to find the distance of the hypotenuse and then use the rate to interpret the solution of the problem. The trigonometric function that deals with opposite and hypotenuse sides is sine. Solve for x. The hawk is 324.853849 feet away from Pat. So how long will it take the hawk to travel this many feet? Divide that number by seven because the hawk's rate of flight is seven feet per second. 46.4076927 dot 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 seconds. Since this is a real life problem, we'll call that about 46 seconds that he has to escape. Go, Pat, go! What is a radian? 
In geometry, you measured angles in degrees. Now we'll learn a new unit of measurement for angles, radians. This deals with the radius. So looking at the angle that is created when we take the length of the radius and lay it on the outside of the circle, it is the angle whose corresponding arc length is the length of the radius. Let's see how many radians are in 180 degrees, or half a circle. Lay the length of the radius out twice onto the circumference of the circle. This angle represents two radians. Let's do that a third time. This angle represents three radians. We almost made it to 180 degrees, or half circle, with three radians. How many radians fit in a half circle? Maybe 3.1 four one five nine where have you seen that number before oh my goodness that is pi most of the time when we write an angle in radians we write it in terms of pi so how much of 180 degrees is it or how much of pi does this angle represent so if we have pi radians in a half circle how many radians do we have in a full circle 2 pi. Other special angles can be represented as a fraction of pi. Write the following in radians. 30 degrees is what fraction of 180? That would be 1 sixth of 180. So 30 degrees can be written as pi divided by 6 or pi over 6. 45 degrees is what fraction of 180? 1 fourth. So 45 degrees in radians is pi fourths or 1 fourth of pi. 60 degrees is one-third of 180. So 60 degrees is one-third of pi, or pi-thirds. And 90 degrees is one-half of 180, so pi over 2. Let's look at 150. Notice that 150 degrees is five 30-degree angles. So if you plug in pi over 6 instead of the 30 degrees and simplify, you'll get the radian equivalent of 150 degrees. So 150 degrees in radians is five pi over 6. Keep going along this column. 210 degrees is seven 30 degree angles. So seven times pi over six, or seven pi over six. And 330 is 11 30 degree angles. So 11 times pi over six. 135 is a multiple of 45. That would be three 45 degree angles. So three times pi over four, the radian equivalent of 45 degrees, which would be three pi over four. 225 is five 45 degree angles. So five pi fourths and 315 is seven 45 degree angles, so seven pi fourths. 120 is two 60 degree angles, so two pi thirds. 240 is four 60 degree angles. 300 is five 60 degree angles, so five pi thirds. 90 is half of pi because pi is 180. Two pi is a full circle, 360. 270 is three 90 degree angles, so three times pi over two, three pi halves. How to draw an angle in standard form. An angle is in standard position when its initial side is along the positive x-axis and its vertex is at the origin. Terminal side is that ending side that shows how far the angle goes. The initial side and the terminal side make up the angle. A positive angle rotates counterclockwise a negative angle rotates clockwise. Coterminal angles, angles that share the same terminal side. The terminal side can rotate an entire circle and keep rotating infinitely many times. For example, negative 315 degrees, 45 degrees, and 405 degrees are coterminal angles because they share a terminal side. They end in the same spot. How many angles total are coterminal to 45 degrees? Well, at 405, I could add another 360 to get 765, and I would have another coterminal angle. I could add another 360 and get another coterminal angle. Or from negative 315, I could subtract 360 and get an even more negative coterminal angle. I could subtract 360 two times and even get a more negative coterminal angle. You can do that infinitely many times, therefore infinitely many angles are coterminal to 45 degrees. Sketch the following angles and find a positive and negative coterminal angle for each. Negative 670 degrees. Well, that's at least one full rotation in the negative direction. So starting at the initial side, we move clockwise at least 360. So negative 310 
is almost another full circle, but 50 degrees short of being another full circle. This is how we would draw that angle to show that it's going around more than once. Let's find a positive and negative coterminal angle. Well, negative 310 is a coterminal angle. We found it by adding 360. We could have also subtracted 360, but adding 360 still gave us a negative, so let's keep adding 360 to get a positive version. So negative 310 degrees and 50 degrees are all coterminal to negative 670 degrees. 7 pi over 4. Remember, pi over 4 is a 45 degree angle. So we're looking at 7 45 degree angles. This is positive, so from the initial side, we'll go up counterclockwise. If we go a whole 180 degrees, we have gone 4 pi over 4. Four. We've gone a whole pi. If we go a full circle in terms of pi over 4, that would be 8 pi over 4. 2 pi is a full circle. So where would 7 pi over 4 lie? To find coterminal angles, we need to add a full circle or subtract a full circle. So add 2 pi or subtract 2 pi. That means 15 pi over 4 and negative pi over 4 are both coterminal angles to 7 pi over 4. Number 5. Find a positive and negative coterminal angle for each given angle. To find coterminal angles, all you have to do is just keep adding 360 or keep subtracting 360. If it's given in radians, then keep adding 2 pi or subtracting 2 pi until you get to a positive angle and a negative angle. Oh look, when we added 360, we got a negative coterminal angle, so we won't even need to subtract 360. Remember, there are infinitely many answers to this. So negative 40 and 320 are not the only positive and negative coterminal angles to negative 400. Try part B on your own. For part C, add and subtract 2 pi. Try part D. This looks like a pretty big angle, so I would start by subtracting 2 pi because I think we'll get another positive one and then we'll have to keep subtracting from there. Well, we found another positive coterminal angle, but we're going to have to subtract 2 pi again to get a negative one. Sketch the given angle in standard position. Negative 560 degrees. That is over a full circle. And it's going in the negative direction. So counterclockwise, a full circle. But how much further than a full circle is it? Let's add 360 to find out. It's further than a full circle by 200 degrees. So if half a circle is 180 over here, 200 would be 20 degrees further than 180. For 410, I'm going in the positive direction past a full circle, up a full circle, and then how much further than that? Let's subtract 360 to find out. 50 degrees further, so if this is 90 degrees, I wanna go a little over halfway to 90. This is how we graph 410, this is how we would graph 50. So the multiple circles that I'm drawing are absolutely necessary to show that this is coterminal to 50 degrees, but it's not 50 degrees. It's 410 degrees, 50 degrees more than a full circle. For negative 205, remember 180 is equidistant from our initial position, so this could also be known as negative 180. So I wanna go past negative 180 by 25 degrees. This one's very close to being coterminal to negative 560. Negative 70 degrees. This would be a right angle, or negative 90 degrees, because it's going down from the initial side. So negative 70 degrees would be 7 ninths of this distance. 5 pi over 6. In terms of pi over 6, pi, or 180 degrees, is 6 pi over 6. So to go 5 pi over 6, we're going to be 1 pi 6 short of a half circle of 180 degrees. For negative 4 pi thirds, in the negative direction and in terms of pi thirds, pi would be negative 3 pi thirds. So we want to go one more pi third past that.
5 pi thirds, so in the positive direction, pi would be 3 pi over 3. So we're going to need to go past pi. Would we need to go past 2 pi? Well, 2 pi is 6 pi over 3. So it looks like we are one third away from 6 pi over 3. 1, 2, 3 thirds, 4, 5 thirds. And 13 pi over 12, in terms of pi over 12, pi would be 12 pi over 12. That means we'll just go 1 pi 12th past. And that's how we draw angles in standard form on a coordinate plane.